To hinge or not to hinge? That is the question. Plus, I'm looking at your golf swing. Let's do this! It's time for our transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. Now, here's what we're doing. And here's what I want to remind you of. I want to look at some of your golf swings. You got to get those golf swings to me. What you're going to do is you're going to take a, a video of your golf swing, make sure you're holding the camera in that landscape horizontal fashion, and then you're going to email it to me at a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. A new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. Send that over to me, and then we'll look at your golf swing the way we're looking at this right now. So, who do we have? We've got Andrew. Let's take a little look at Andrew's swing here. It's a really, that's a beautiful golf swing. Let's look at it on the other side here too. Let's go over to this one and take a little peek at what this looks like. Okay, now a couple things that are going on with Andrew's swing. First of all, it's a really, really nice golf swing. Setup position is really good. Let me just get you through a couple of things here. That's the side of his head. That's the outside of the trail hip. Now, as he starts to get to going, he's got a little bit of a lean to the, to the trail side, and then he shifts his, his lower body. Now, when you start to do that, in effect, what you do is you move ball position. And once you move ball position, in the middle of the swing, boy, things change quite a bit. So, I'm not necessarily a fan so far of what I'm seeing. This is a really good golf swing, and yet, there are some minor flaws that we can kind of sweep up a little bit, fix a little bit, and all of a sudden, we'll start hitting this a little bit better. So now, there's that little shift. Club goes back. Pretty good rotation. Now, what you see, which is interesting, is the trail hip has now gotten back inside where it started. So, do we mind that? No, actually, that's pretty good. But what happens is, is it creates a lot of rotation in the body, almost too much rotation in the body. And what that's going to lead to is a little bit of a challenge when we start bringing this golf club back down into the strike, which I'm going to show you about. So pretty good swing. Lower body is now hanging back. Now, look at how right in here, there's really not a lot of rotation. We start the, the body, particularly the shoulder, is moving in an upward direction right here. And the arms are trapped behind. In fact, you can see if you blow this up, look at what happens with this foot. You see how it's sliding that way? That's because the body can't continue to rotate, so it's just sliding, and it's sliding, it's pulling that along. So do some math on this. Slide in the back with the upper body, slide in the through swing or the down swing, and now there's a lot of horizontal movement, not a lot of rotational movement. And when we start doing that, we start getting into some problems. So now we're here. Not a lot of compression in that, not a lot of rotation. That trail foot is still on the ground, and now it starts to come up. Now let me go back to this because I want to show you what happens when we get into this strike or this position where we're coming down into the ball. So remember before I was telling you about the shift, the rotation? Look at how far the club head is behind him now. Now we're in here. Club face is a little open, so that's what we call an around and up motion. Lower knee or back knee. That's locked out. Now we start to work. Head starts to shift. Look at how much the, the eye line and the head start to move back and away. You see the chin is now dropping into the shoulder. So we're never getting the chin, we're never getting the shoulder off of the chin. We're just stuffing the chin into the chest, which uh, inhibits our ability to rotate. And as a result of that, when the club starts to come down, it's coming down way from the inside. That club is almost well, that's not on the ground, but it's almost on the ground. The, the toes are going this way. This strike looks like it's going to go like that. The only way he's going to be able to get that club to the ball is to push it out there. And what you can see is when he pushes out, look at how the strike is here and the ball is, is spun off that way. And now, 
Here's where we get into some other problems. We're going to get a lot of hand activity, which we have to have. If the body's quiet, the hands are going to get active. I know you're sitting there going, wow, there's a lot of stuff going on here. But it's really all because of what happened at the start. I'm going to show you how to fix this. And it's going to be a really simple one. So now when he goes, watch what happens to his hands and the exit point of the club and the, and the hands. You cannot believe how vertically this club and hand, how they move through. So a lot of rotation there. I can still see the hands, still see the club, still see the hands. Look at where the club has come out. The club is coming out right through his ear. And now watch where his hands come out. They come out over here. So the club head comes out. All of them should be, I want him to be in this area here. And he's got them way up here. That's a problem. So let's come over here and let's solve this problem. Because what we have is, we have a situation where the start of the swing, there's a shift and then a lot of rotation here. And that rotation is getting the club inside and now we start to slide, slide, slide back in. That's gonna drop the arms down here. The club is now gonna work through out that way. This can be what we would call a, a push path shank, a push path. So the path is pushing out to the, to the right and that can bring a hosel in there. And Andrew, I would imagine that you've probably hit a couple of these in your life. It's, it's not a fun thing to do but it is likely happening. What I want to have happen is I want you to feel like the first thing that's gonna move in your swing is your hip. You do a wonderful job with the lower body. The hip is gonna work, but I want your arms to move away from you. So your hip is gonna go back and your arms are gonna go out. So when we take the club back, we rotate and push out and now the club is gonna be high up top and inside, not trapped behind us, but up in here. And then from there, we're gonna come down on top of this. And the way you're gonna teach yourself how to do this is this simple. We're gonna take one ball and put a ball out here. I'm gonna take another ball and put a ball right here. If I take the club too much inside, I'm gonna hit this yellow ball, okay? And if and when I come back through, if I've got it too much from the inside, I'm gonna hit that yellow ball. We wanna feel this club from the outside right here, so. Push, and then out. Push, and then out. Now, the, the sim isn't gonna pick up all this stuff because of all these golf balls right here. But you can see that when I made that swing, I didn't hit these two other golf balls, okay? Body rotates, hip rotates back, arms push away. So these two things are separating right here. And now you're coming down on top of that. Now. Let's put these back here. Take this, I don't need that other ball. And now what I want you to see is what happens to my start line. Because remember the shot that Andrew hit. It started well to the right. So we're looking now at the horizontal launch, not the vertical launch, not how it's launching up into the air, how it's launching on the ground, left or right. So I'm gonna get the hips to rotate, let the arms move away from the body. And then I'm imagining that white ball up there and the yellow ball down in here. And now what I get there is, I get a shot that goes out, and Greg, I'm gonna, I'm gonna want you to, to show that shot again, because they didn't hit this hard, but what I want you to see is how this ball starts out slightly to the left, and then peels back to the right. Now, come on up here to the front row, and what you can see is the horizontal launch there is 0.3 degrees to the left. For you, Andrew, that's gonna feel literally like you're pulling this shot. That's what it's gonna feel like. It won't be that, 0.3 is nothing but that's what it's gonna feel like. And when we go back and we do this again, the other thing that you're gonna to start to feel, and I wanna address this, because this is really important, that part in the swing where the chin starts to dive into the chest. So we start to come down, the body is sliding and rotating. I mean, we're, it's sliding but not rotating, and now all of a sudden the chin dives into the chest. Well, when we start to do this move where the club is out here and over there, the lead shoulder is gonna be working away from the chin and helping the body to open, which is gonna lift that trail heel. So I'm gonna see those two things again. The yellow ball is in here, the white ball is out here. Arms are gonna be working away, hip is gonna rotate back. And then we're gonna just get it into that path right there. That was a better strike by a lot. 
added a little bit of club head speed into that one. That one's gonna have a bit of a fade, so I don't have a lot of face rotation. And when we come up here, what we see now is, is that that horizontal launch was 1.2 degrees to the left. 1.2 degrees to the left for Andrew, that's gonna feel like a massive over the top feel. And that's what I want you to feel. And when you do that, you'll start to feel this lead shoulder working away from the chin. The chin won't be driving into the chest. And as that all starts to happen, you're gonna to start to hit the ball more solidly. You'll also notice in the down the line view that the club head is now on the strike line for a long time instead of flashing across it. And as that starts to happen, now we start getting some consistency in the start line of the shot. We become less face reliant in the motion. And as a result, we get much more consistency in the overall distance that the ball travels because we hit the ball first instead of hitting the ground first. There's a whole lot of reasons why that's gonna help you. So put all that stuff together, Andrew, and when you do that, I'm telling you that handicap is coming down. And by the way, it's at nine with all that. I know you've got a lot of skill and I know that you love this game of golf and I appreciate you sending that. And by the way, a little reminder again, send those videos to me, hold that camera in that horizontal fashion and send it over to a new breed of golf at michaelbreed.com. We'll pop you up here on the show and help you improve your game. And that's our transformational tip presented by Morgan Franklin. Short game is always something you just, you never get enough information. We've got a grip tip for you presented by Golf Pride. Here's the question. Do I hinge or should I not hinge? I see great players like Phil Mickelson, wonderful short game, he's got a little hinge in there. I see Jason Day, wonderful short game, doesn't really hinge the club. And yet both are very effective. So what's the best one for me? What should I do? Well, let me talk to you a little bit about the advantages of hinging versus not hinging, okay? One, when I hinge a little bit, what I'm doing is I'm allowing the club head to move a little farther with the arms not moving quite so much. In other words, if I take the club back without any hinge and I get the club head so that it's probably in a 10 o'clock position, 12 o'clock being above me here, 10 o'clock being right over here. Now, if I'm in that 10 o'clock position, my lead arm is about at nine o'clock. That would be what we would call no hinge. If I take the club now and add hinge and get it to 10 o'clock, which is right about there, now all of a sudden this arm is right around eight o'clock. So I've saved about an hour in arm movement. I don't have to work that hard with the arms. They don't have to move as far in order for me to be able to get the club head up to that 10 o'clock position. And when I get to where I have it in that spot, now I have a chance of letting this club drop down with what we would call effortless speed. So a little bit of hinge here, and then we hit that shot there, and the shot comes out. Now, we're gonna look at a couple of little different things, so come on up here. We'll go up to the front here, and I just want you to pay attention to a couple of things. One, my vertical launch angle was right at about 30 there when I got that hinge a little lower. My spin rate goes to 6,300. Even though the ball speed was at 45 and I flew that at about, well, it went out to about 39. But I want you to pay attention to a couple different things. The, the launch angle and the spin rate, and then hopefully I'll be able to create a ball speed that will be somewhat similar to this 45 miles an hour. That's, that's where we are. Now, when I do that hinge, what I get is I get a shot that maybe flights out a little bit lower and has a little less spin. Why is that? Because the angle of attack is gonna be steeper. And when the angle of attack is steeper, I've taken off some loft on that club face. And when I do that, that's gonna flight it out a little bit lower. And as it comes off a little bit lower, it might have just a little less spin to it. Now, when I go into a shot where I'm not getting any hinge here, and then come through. Hopefully I can create another shot that has about 45 miles an hour of ball speed. I hit that a little bit farther than I wanted to hit it. And as we go over here, just come on up here and I'll just show you that again. That went a little farther than I wanted, so the speed's gonna be off a bit. I'm at 52.4. But there are some things that I can get from this. One, the launch angle went up right there. You can see that launch angle goes up to 33. 
But because it's a little bit of a shallower approach when this club is coming in, my spin rate goes up a little bit. And my spin rate there went up to about 6,900. We'll go back here and do this again. Now, what would be the advantage of this? Well, when I don't have any hinge, now I'm basically hitting the shot with my chest. In other words, I'm gonna turn my chest back like this, I'm gonna turn my chest back through here, and I'm using the body much more thoroughly. There's another good shot, an excellent shot. Come on up here again, and we go back up to, see my, spat, my backspin number right here at 72, 73, so that went up ball speed right around 48, so pretty close. So what I'm starting to get is I'm starting to get a little bit more spin and a little bit, uh, well, a little higher launch angle that would happen. That one there was about 31 degrees, so not dramatically different, but definitely higher. That has, that has a purpose, and you have to understand that when you get into these shots, you want to evaluate, well, what is it that I want to do? I'm not necessarily saying that you should do one over another. What I am saying is you can have both of these. Now, some of you may be able to practice this. Some of you may, may only have enough time to practice one thing. One of the other reasons why I like a little bit of a hinge sometimes is it allows my tempo to be a little bit better. In other words, when I start doing this and just letting my arms kind of hinge that up into the air, all of a sudden what that allows me to do is I don't really have to work so hard because my arms don't have to go as far. My body doesn't have to rotate as much. And when I'm doing that, I get a little bit more, I'll call it fluidity in the shot. I, I, when, I, when I think of a Jason Day hitting a, a little short shot, his tempo is a little bit different than say a Phil Mickelson. Obviously, the type of shot they're trying to hit has an effect on all of that as well. Now, here's what I'll also tell you. If you're one of those individuals that's having a little bit of a tough time with grip pressure, maybe you hold it a little bit too tight, what I would tell you is try to add a little hinge in there because what the hinge will allow you to do is hold this a little bit looser and what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to have maybe a, a little less pressure on the shot. You also have gravity kind of helping you a little bit more. When I take this club here, now I just let that, that, that hinge almost go. So I get it up here and I get this, and now I just let it fall down to the ground there. When I don't have hinge, I've got to move my arms a lot more. So the arm speed in a no hinge short shot is obviously much greater than if I have a little bit of hinge when I'm hitting this shot. I hit one more here with the no hinge. Again, launch angle, spin rate, all that stuff. Here we go. And that one's gonna be a little bit farther than I want it to go. So a little bit of practice is required, but the same thing. Launch angle up around 32, spin rate up around 7,400. All these different things are, are parts of short game that you need to, to, to work on and, and develop what the best one is for you. So here's what I would tell you. What I would tell you is short game offers a lot of different opportunities. And that big question of should I hinge or shouldn't I hinge, I think is really a shot shape or shot outcome decision, not necessarily a given technique. If you wanna go into one technique or another, you can absolutely do that, try to perfect that, absolutely. I'm not saying that, I'm saying you have choices. And what I would suggest is figure out what's best for you. Can you do both? Can you only do one? Are you better at one over another? This is something that I know that with a little bit of practice, you'll find the right direction for you and you'll find the success that will allow you to stand over these in-between shots, 40, 50 yards, whatever it may be, and execute the way you wanna execute. That's our grip tip presented by Golf Pro. It's time for Proving It, presented by Titleist. We're talking a little short game, helping you hit all kinds of different shots and showing you the importance of controlling wrist movement in this short game. Now, let me tell you what I mean. If I'm going to hit a shot and I want to have what I'll say effortless power or effortless speed in this club head, I want to create a hinge, but there's a lot of ways to hinge this club. And what I'm also going to do with the hinge, am I going to let go of that? Am I going to release that? Or am I going to maintain that? 
Let me show you what I mean. So this is just going to be a swing where I hinge it and then I unhinge it. So I'm going to let it get up here and then I'm going to chuck it into the ground. Watch what happens to this shot. So this is about a 40 yard shot. I throw that club head into the ground. Now, come on up here and look at what happens to this. I got a, a launch angle there of about 33 degrees. We want to pay attention to this. 33 degrees of launch there, spins about 7,500, and I got a ball speed of 45. The ball went a total distance of about 41 yards land, so it rolled out about six feet. Now, why does it roll out six feet? It had 7,400 RPMs of spin. Why does it roll out? One of the reasons why it rolls out is because when we're hitting this shot and I'm releasing that, I can also release that to closed or release it to open. And that will have an effect on how this ball rolls out. What also we need to understand is how we hinge it in the backswing. So I'm gonna show you now various differences in this backswing hinge. And in the down the line view, we wanna pay attention to a couple of different things. One, What's going on with the rotation of the forearms? So if I hinge this and I rotate my forearms like this, I'm opening up that club face. So when I go like that, I open up the club face, I'm still getting a lot of hinge, not a lot of arm movement, but now what I've done is I've added loft to this club. So this club has 54 degrees of loft. When I do this, this ball is gonna launch up even higher. And as it launches up a little bit higher, the apex on that shot was 23 feet. Watch what happens to this one now. So I'm gonna take this, hinge it up open. This is gonna go straight up into the air. It's not my most lofted club, but it will play very, very lofted. So now there's that shot right there. Now, look at that ball spin back to me. Come on up here. This is really fun to see what happens. So what I did was I let that, that forearm rotate open this way, hinged it up, came down and hit the shot. Now. Remember I told you before about those numbers that we had. Launch angle 33, apex of 23, spin rate, all that stuff. Well, look at what happened. I launched this one at 34 now because I spun that open. Let it go down. My apex was 23, it's the exact same thing. But what happened? My spin, weight, my spin rate went up to 8,800. I got a ton more spin because when I came through there and I shot that down, I got a little bit higher launch angle, but I got a lot more spin on that shot, almost up to 9,000 RPMs. And what's also really cool, my ball speed was right around 45, about the exact same as what I had before. Now, what occurred? Well, the ball this time landed 38, but instead of rolling out to 40 or 41, it spun back to 37.5. So I almost got a full yard of backspin in that shot by letting the forearm rotate and letting that club face open up. Pretty cool. Now, watch this other hinge. So when we take this one, and instead of hinging it where it opens, I'm gonna hinge it where it closes. Now, I'll have less hinge because this has a greater range of motion than this. However, when I do this, Watch what happens. I'm, there will be two things that are gonna occur. One will be that it launches a little bit lower, and one will be that spin rate goes down. And those two things will have an effect on how this ball rolls out. So, hinge it up like this, shut. And now I hit that shot. Now, as we go up here, let's go back up to here. Remember I told you before about what would happen to launch angle, what would happen to spin rate. Watch what happens. The launch angle goes to 25, so I almost lost 10 degrees of launch. That brought that down. That's why the apex was at, at 16. Now, what did I get? Well, I got a ball speed that went up to 48. Why? Because my club face was a little bit more shut, and that means that that same club head speed is gonna create a little bit more ball speed because it's a little flatter. And watch what happened here. So it went a total of 39.8 yards. So it was pretty close to the same distance in the air, but this one rolled out about nine feet. Why did it roll out nine feet? Well, look at the backspin number. It goes down from 8,800 to 7,400 by hinging that thing shut that way. Now, I've talked to you about the, back, the, the backswing, how we hinge it differently, those three different hinges. And don't worry about the hooks or the cuts. Those are gonna happen with what you do in the downswing or in the through swing. So, as we come in here, a lot of different things we can do here, and this is one of the reasons why short game to me is such a fascinating part of the game of golf. Because when I come down here, now I can take this hinge and I can let go of this hinge. When I take this hinge and I let go of this hinge, 
Now all of a sudden I'm adding loft. And when I start to add loft, apexes are gonna go up again, launch angles are gonna start to go up again. And depending upon what happens with the rotation of the forearm, not just combining with the, the release of the wrist, but also if I've, if I've rotated, supinate, pronate, if I've, if I've done any of that stuff, now what ends up happening is I can also affect spin there. So this time what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hinge this up and I'm just gonna un, or, uh, let go of this hinge, release the hinge, unhinge. So here's what we're gonna do. Hinge, unhinge. Now watch what happens with this shot. So we come up here and we look at this. Now this is pretty cool what happened because I did increase my backspin there. My backspin went up to 8,400. So that ball should have spun back, shouldn't it have, Michael? Not necessarily. Spin rate could definitely do that, but it doesn't necessarily mean that's what's gonna happen. And what we also saw was the vertical launch went up. Remember before on that hinge, I had that thing at about 25. Now I release that thing, it goes back up to 32. Apex goes back up to 22. Ball speed's almost identical. I had it at 45 before, it's at 46.7, so that's close enough for government work. Flies 40, rolls out another three. Now. Watch what happens here when I don't release this. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hinge this, but I'm not gonna release the angle. I'm gonna hold on to this angle. So here we go. So now I hold on to that. Now, a number of things are gonna happen here. Watch what happens here, and this is the cool part about this sport. Spin rate definitely has an effect on things, but it's not just spin rate. I hate to say that, it's not just spin rate. It has an effect, but it's not just spin rate. So when I hit that shot, let me t let's go through all this stuff again. My vertical launch goes back down to 25 because I'm holding onto the angle. So when I create the wrist hinge, I take loft off the club face because it's gonna be a steeper angle of approach. I haven't added any width in that. What I've done is I've held onto this and I've hit this. So this steeper angle of approach, now the club is descending on this. And when it descends on that, that can have an effect on a lot of different things. And what it has an effect on is the vertical launch. It also has an effect on the apex. It also has an effect on the spin, which went down to 6,400. It also will increase ball speed, believe it or not. 51.6 my ball speed went to, and that one went, it flew about 45 yards and rolled out a couple of feet. Now, not nine, it only rolled out about six. Let me show you what happens here when I take this hinge now and I'm gonna hang on to it, but I'm gonna roll my forearms this time. So what's happened when I do this, it's almost like I'm hitting a hook. So I'm gonna get my hinge and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna turn the club face down. So I turn it down. Now watch what happens with this one. I'm wiping off spin when I do that. Come back up here. And now all of a sudden launch angle goes down to 24.4 because I held onto it, but I rotated it. And when I rotate it, I shut a little bit of the club face. It'll deflect to the left, which is why you're gonna see the horizontal launch go to four degrees to the left. Because when the club comes in and it does that, it deflects it to the left, but it also wipes off spin. So here I'm at 5,600. And that's why when that ball hit on the ground, it hit on the ground at 37.6, it rolled out to 43.9. That's almost 20 feet there. So when we start thinking about, well, where's the hole located? What type of shot do I want in here? Do I want a low runner? Do I want one that has a low spin? Do I want to fight a slope? Whatever it is I want to do. Now, I've taken my hinge that I have in the backswing, but now I've altered what I do in the downswing. There's so many different ways to play short shots. And I love the options. I'm going to show you this last one. And this last one is going to have a little bit of rotation open, and then when I come through here, I'm gonna hang on to this. It's almost like a cut shot here. So I'm gonna go here, there. Watch what happens with this one. So now I hit this shot. And Greg, I don't know whether or not you're gonna be able to replay that one. Can you just replay that one shot? Because watch this, this is actually gonna curve in the air. You see that one fade in the air? All right, now, Come on up here to the front edge because I told you, things are gonna change a little bit when I do that. I rolled that open, I got my club face open, and then when I came through, I released it with an open face. Look at what happened. Apex 19, so not my highest. Vertical launch, 28.7, so that's pretty good. 
Why? Well, because it's steep when I'm coming. Across. So when I start swinging across, I'm actually steepening this angle of approach. I'm going to be now chopping down into it, which is going to help me with the spin. And then when I cut it, now all of a sudden spin rate goes back up to about 8,800. And what I get is I get a golf ball that almost releases only about three feet, but it's got a right chisel to it. So when you look at the side spin, there's 1400 RPMs to the right there. And that is how you're gonna alter these little different things. Now, why do we do all this? Well, you may have a whole location that's sitting on the side of a, like it's, you're coming into this shot and the high side of the green is to the right, low is to the left and you're a right-handed player wanted to try to hold that ball up against it. Well, if I cut across it, and I've got all that side spin going into it that, that's going to the right. Now, all of a sudden, when it hits, it's not going to release left. It'll release right. And since it's fighting that slope, it's going to stop a little bit. So do I have a front flag? Do I have a back flag? Is there a knoll in the way? Do I have to carry that? Do I have to roll it out? There's all these different options that are, have it, that are happening around the green uh, when you're inside of this 40, 50 yard range, there's all kinds of different things that are taking place. And what I can tell you is, is that I give you permission to experiment. It's one of the most important things that you can do for your game. You've got to experiment and find out what shot I like to hit. What shot should I hit? Can I hit that shot that I'm supposed to hit? Or can I execute that with something else? And as you start to mess around with all this, you're gonna find that you're gonna affect spin rates, launch angles, apexes, all sorts of different things. And that's gonna be a, both a good and a bad thing. And as you start thinking about what's gonna help you improve your game, you've gotta realize that your ability to control this wedge around the greens, this is what's gonna save you on par fives, maybe give you a birdie opportunity. It's also gonna save you on par fours when you've maybe hit an errant shot, whether it's a tee shot or an approach shot. You have to be able to look at the short game as the thing that's gonna save your game and help you shoot lower scores. That's proven it. Presented by Titleist.